Paul told me is that without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiving of sin. Without the Jesus' blood being shed, we could not be forgiven of our sin. That is just a law of atonement. That everyone, everywhere, under the, under the sun, is subject to those laws. And then there is a law that we are going to talk about today. That's the law of, or some people call it a principle of, showing and reaping that everyone is held to. This law says that whatever you plant, that which you plant will be that thing that you reap and harvest. Meaning that if you plant a field of wheat, when it is a wheat, when it is time to harvest, you will not go in that field and find corn. If you plant an apple tree, when that tree is full grown, grown, you won't find a fig tree in its place. Whatever you plant, whatever you sow, you will also reap. And because that law holds true as a believer, we know that once the heart, the, because that law holds true, as believers we know that a harvest is guaranteed because God is not mocked. The Bible, the scripture begins, God is not mocked. That means you will definitely have a harvest. No matter what you sow, whether it is good or bad, you are going to harvest the very thing you sow. The harvest is guaranteed. Whatever you planted, you will see the fruit thereof. And because we will guarantee, we are guaranteed a harvest as believers. We have to understand, and this leads to my first point, you got to know that you have to sow only the things you desire to reap. If you know a harvest is going to come, if you know you will certainly reap what you sow, you should only sow the things that you desire to reap. See, the fruit of our lives are the result of the things that we saw, whether recently or in the past. See, we reap seed of its own kind, right? You plant an apple seed, you're going to get an apple tree, right? You plant a fig seed, you're going to get a fig tree. You reap the seed of its kind. That's why when we look at our own children, we see similar characteristics of what we see in ourselves, whether it's good or bad, because we reap what we sow. Right? You know the saying, the fruit don't fall far from the tree? The apple don't fall far from the tree? That saying is true because we reap of the same kinds of seed that we sow. So many times you get to fussing at your children. I, I see it all the time. I work in the school. I see parents fussing and, and ready to tear their children apart for a lot of the things that they do themselves. They're ready to fuss at their children about the very thing their children see in them. The things that they as parents sold in them, they get mad at the child for being the fruit of his own kind. You get mad at the attitudes they carry, but guess what? You carry the same attitudes. The attitudes that you've been carrying, you've been showing into them. Hmm. Talking about my child, so lazy. My child don't want to do nothing. Then you look at yourself like, wait a minute. Hmm. Where's he getting it from? It's been some things that's been shown in the child. We see it in our own physical health. Our physical issues, of most of them, are a result of the years of McDonald's and KFT that we've been sowing in our lives. Now we have some harvest, some fat fruit, because all those seeds we've been sowing, all those greasy seeds full of saturated fats we've been sowing, it has manifested itself in heart disease and clogged arteries. We have sown those seeds, and we see those things being manifested. Reaping a fat harvest unto ourselves. Because what we put in ourselves. Right? And then we wonder why children have the same habits. And we wonder why the, their heart disease go from generation to generation. 
We wonder why some things are carried on from generation to generation because we are sowing the seeds of the same kind. If you're a lawbreaker, chances are your children are going to be lawbreakers, and their children are going to be lawbreakers, and their children. So from generation to generation, you see the fruit of the seed of his own kind because that's what's being sown into them. So for years, some of us have been sown completely to our flesh. And now we see so many issues of the flesh that we're dealing with. Those times of looking and those times of, of lusting had turned into years of hormone, pornography, fornication, and adultery. I hear people say sometimes, Pastor, what's wrong with looking? Ain't nothing wrong with looking, I'm just looking. But guess what? When you look, you're sowing a seed in your spirit. And that seed will be harvested at some point. And you wonder why in the day of temptation you don't have no strength to stand. It's because you sown a seed into your flesh and now you are reaping the corruption thereof. You've been looking and lusting. You've been sowing seed into your own flesh. You've been meditating on what you're going to do when you get some money. And when it's time, when you have to make a decision whether to be faithful and tithe or spend the money otherwise so in other places, you're going to drift over to the other side because you already sown that seed to your flesh. You already made a declaration, this is what I'm going to do. I, I've been wanting this car for years. I've been wanting this house for years. I've been wanting those clothes for years. But when it's time to really show into the kingdom of God, you steal it from the church. Did I say that? Did I call it still, but I absolutely did. Because you've been sowing those years. For years, you've been sowing corruption to your flesh. And now it's time to harvest. Guess what? See, that's why you can't be under the belief that you think you're going to perform in the time that it's time to perform. So many people think, well, uh, well, when it's time for me to, to do those things, I'll do it. Absolutely not. Because when it's time, when the harvest comes, the only thing that's going to come out is what you've been showing. So you can't think that once people start entering the church, that we're going to start praying and laying on hands and start acting like a church. No, we're going to act like we will be always act like because those are the seeds we've been sowing. We're going to be what we always been because those are seeds we've been sowing. We're only going to reap the seeds of its own kind. So whatever you've been sowing, that's what you're going to reap. That's why it's so important for us to be sowing seeds into people and within ourselves and into the spirit because we all have an understanding. Whatever we plant, that's what we're going to be going to harvest. So we ought to plant what we want to harvest. If you want to harvest joy and patience and, and love, you got to be showing seeds of joy, patience, and love. If you want your spouse to have a harvest of, of, of peace and blessings toward you, you got to be showing that seed into that spouse, into your children, into your job. Don't think you just walk in your job and all of a sudden things are just going to be better because you've been praying about it. What have you been showing on that job? What have you been showing into your marriage? What have you been showing into your prayer life? When it's time to really stand by faith and believe God for the impossible, have you been showing seeds to the spirit when it's time to reap? If I had a seed or the mustard seed, I can speak to that mountain and be, and it ain't gonna go from here and there. But I'm gonna tell you, if you haven't been have sown seeds of faith, how are you gonna speak to anything? Well, I have a seed of a mustard seed. You have seeds of corruption and flesh, and that's what you've been sowing into. You've been sowing seeds of fear and desperation and, and doing it your own way. And then when it's time to speak to a mountain, that mountain is not gonna budge because you haven't been sowing seeds of faith. I stepped on somebody's toe. I stepped on somebody's toes. See, whatever you sow, you're going to reap the harvest and get the tea. 
So as a people of God, we have to make a determination. What is it that we want to reap later? Malachi 3.10 ends with saying, God saying, put me to the test. God proves it every time that the harvest will come. But what's in the harvest is determined by what we sow. We sow into the kingdom of God. We sow into the spirit. If there's a guarantee of life. Sometimes we wonder, it seems like. We see people, it seems like all of a sudden. All of a sudden, they just start prospering. All of a sudden, they just start to, doors seem to open up for them. All of a sudden, they just seem like they just made half kind of, all kinds of uh, a breakthrough. But what we don't see is all those years of tears and blood, sweat, and tears. And those years they spent on their knees operating by faith, trusting God for open doors, trusting God for prosperity, trusting God for provision. It seemed like overnight to us, but we don't see all those years of, of sowing. We only see the, the harvest. See, seeds, the things we sow can be in secret. We can sow seeds in secret, but guess what? The harvest is going to be made public. Whatever you're showing in secret, it's going to be made public sooner or later. Sooner or later, whatever you've been sowing, it's going to be made public. It's going to manifest itself over time. It's going to come out. Right? If you look at this ministry, there's going to be people say, man, that ministry was just five people. Now, overnight, it seemed like. They just blew up. But they ain't see the seven and the eight years of on our knees and praying and fasting and, and, and pursuing God. See, people don't see what's underneath the ground. They don't see the seeds underneath the ground. They, they just see the harvest later. But while before the harvest, what we need to do as believers is to be showing those seeds of what we want to harvest later. See, sowing requires some hours of sacrifice. Sowing requires hours of toil, years of toil. When a farmer is out there breaking up the ground, when a beast, a bird is out there tilling, the harvest comes later, but you have to see the years and the weeks of harvesting and breaking ground and planting seeds and, and pulling out wheat and pulling out pulling out all the weeds. Are those all those years of hard all those years of sowing went into the wheat. But most people on the outside, all they see is the fruit. All they see, wow, look at this crop. Look at look how great this harvest is. It didn't come by itself. That was some years of breakthrough. It was a years of faith. Some people have said to me, why, is, why, why do you seem like you just be giving stuff? People just give you stuff. I said, people just give me stuff. You don't realize how many years of crying and snot not been in my closet asking God for provisions and trusting God and saying, Lord, if it's not going to be you, then it's not going to be. All those years, they, they see, man, you got a lot of kids, but they don't see all the years that we've been praying and fasting and seeking the Lord just for one. So we have to be faithful in our cultivating, faithful in our, 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 our showing. Because at some point, what we've been showing in secret, what we've been showing with the seeds that people have not seen, it will be made manifest to all. You got to do what nobody else is watching. And nobody else looking. You just sowing seeds into the spirit, praying, fasting, seeking the Lord. And then to everybody else, it's just going to seem like you just an uh, overnight wonder. All of a sudden, you just have stuff from other perspectives. Let's look at verse 9. 
And the Bible says, and says, so let's not get tired of doing what is, is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Another version says, and let us not go weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. My next point, do not, don't give up, don't lose heart. See, the one thing that we have to understand about sowing and reaping is the fact that you don't usually reap in the same season that you sow. Most of us who live out in here in the Midwest, we understand that. We understand that, that crops take time to grow and to decay. See, that's what Paul says at the beginning of all this, that we shouldn't be deceived because you don't see it because you don't see it, you can't allow doubt to set in and you can't begin to want to give up. It is most certainly coming a time where you will reap a harvest, but the reaping usually don't come in the same season of the sowing. It's going to come a time where it's going to happen, but guess what? We can't lose heart because it takes time. See, Depending on the size of the crop or depending on the size of what you're trying to do, sometimes it takes a lot longer to develop than anything else. For example, even in nature, we see that with the bigger animals, it takes a longer gestation period than with the smaller animals. For a human being, for a human being to born, be born, it usually takes about 10 months. Right? But for an elephant, it takes about 22 months before we see what was sown two years ago. See, the elephant that is being born, that seed was planted two years ago. So we don't usually see what is sown in the, the same season. You just have to go through the growing pains, go through the pain of just pains of gestation, the pain of giving birth. We just have to, if we can just bear up beneath, underneath that pain, eventually we're going to give birth to what God has sown in us, the seeds that God planted in us years ago. Eventually, we will get work. Eventually, that thing is going to take, come to pass. But you have to understand, there's just a right time for the seeds that were sown to grow. There is a right time. If you're expecting some great things, which I am, but it requires a level of faith to be developing us to receive the harvest. So many times we, we want, we trust the God for, for, for some great things. We want God to do it big. We want God to do, go, uh, we, I, want, I want that thing that I have not seen or ear has heard. I want that thing. I want that thing that God has in store for me. But guess what? That thing's going to require some greater levels of faith and surrender in you. So you got to begin to sow now. For if you want to reap that greater thing later, you got to begin to show into sp in the spirit by trusting God, following after God, bearing down, stand faithful in service to the Lord in order to reap that thing later. See, God got to do some developing in you. He got to grow that thing in you, but it requires allowing God to do it. Stuff just don't happen. God just don't give you anything. You got to develop some things in you. Children of Israel didn't leave Egypt and walk right into the promised land. They had to be developed. It took 40 years of God developing them. See, the promise was promised. They most certainly entered the promised land. But it took 40 years of a wilderness experience to get them where they needed to go. Moses fulfilled his purpose most certainly, but it took 40 years in shepherding for him to, to know how to shepherd people. He had to spend 40 years shepherding sheep 
In order to learn how to shepherd a nation of people, it took some time for God to develop that in him. See, God had to get some fear out of Moses. God had to get some uh, trust issues out of Moses. God had to raise Moses up to the right time when he encountered the burning bush. See, that wasn't just so happenstance. He walked, probably walked past that bush many times before, but it was just the right time. God knew he was ready. Now he was ready. Now he completed some things in him. Even with Jesus. He spent 40 years in the wilderness, 40 days in the wilderness, fasting. God was developing something in Jesus. See, Jesus was a human being just like you and I. God developed something in him during those 40 days of fasting. So at the, the Bible said at the end of those 40 days, at the end of those development, then he allowed Satan to come and tempt him. He was ready for it. He was ready for the challenge. He knew just what to say and how to say it. See, temptation is real. See, y'all think that, G that temptation for Jesus was just, oh, that's Jesus. It was just it was the Bible said he was tempted. That means it had a pull on him. That means the thing that Satan was offering, he wanted. Y'all, I'm not talking bad about Jesus. He got the victory. But that don't mean he wasn't tempted. Some temptation wasn't a sin. It's yielded to temptation is a sin. Because he was tempted, he stood firm in the grace of God, and he was able to resist the devil, and as the Bible says, he fled from him. But it took some time. God developed something in Jesus. So God developed something in us. We don't reap in the same season that we sow. Most of the time, if it's something great, it's going to take some time to develop. It's going to take some years of development in you because God is trying to develop, trying to shift and shake something in you. See, you were born in iniquity. You were shaped in iniquity. But when you come to Christ, God is reshaping you and doing something in you to make you look like what he has purposed you for. See, you were born just a lump of clay. But God has to take time to spin you and shape you into the vessel that, he, that is most useful to him. But until then, sometimes he got to remove some of that clay. Sometimes he got to hollow you out. Sometimes he got to shape you in certain areas in, 40, in order for you to be the vessel that he wants to use. But we can't give up heart. Sometimes we just quit. Right there on the potter's wheel, we give up. We just quit. We just turn right back into that lump of clay. Because they want time yet. Because it didn't happen in the season that we wanted to happen. We quit. Wait a minute, God, I don't see the people you promised. Wait a minute, God, I don't see this financial blessing. Wait a minute, God, I don't see these children that you promised me. Wait a minute, what's going on? I don't see it, so I, 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 I quit. I leave, I give up. I, I forget this Christian thing. I give up. God is trying to develop. If you don't lose heart, you will most certainly reap the harvest. If you don't win, don't let sin sink in. Don't let the devil come in to deceive you. Don't let the trick you of the world. Just because you look out the world and see people prosper, that's them. They're going to have their day. But guess what? It's going to be just the right time for you to get what God desires for you. You don't want what they want. That what they got is going to take you straight to hell in a handbasket. You want what God has for you. You can't handle nothing else. You was God fit for your own purpose. God had to develop it. He had to shape some things in you. And it takes some time. Sometimes it takes time. I don't matter. God, take your time with me. Because I'm going to be able to stand underneath the weight. Right? And sometimes God, he's going to give you something. He ain't going to give it to you all at once. God didn't give the promised land to the children of Israel all at once. It was campaign upon campaign. He developed them over time. But the Bible says that they, he had to take all the enemy out of the beast of the field. What he got them. So it took some time. He couldn't give it to them all at once. They couldn't handle it all at once. That's why on this journey, on this path to going with God to take them, we, we get little trickles in of 
of something to just help our faith. God just show you, he show you a little something. So you keep on, you're on the right path, keep coming. He a little something. You may be trusting God to heal you of some, some disease and, and you pray for a headache and go away. Okay, God is a healer. Okay. I was able to get him over this headache. So if I can you believe God for a headache, I can believe him for this disease. Mm. See, sometimes we just want to go straight to raising the dead. You can't even believe God for a headache. God, I'm not raising the dead. You don't even trust God for your, 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 your common cold. But you want to see miracles that big, you can't even trust God for the little stuff. It takes some development. It takes some things for God to do something in you. Because you don't reap in the same season you sow. Sometimes crops take a lot longer. And just because it's winter don't mean there's not no seeds underneath that ground. That's because it's, it's times of dryness doesn't mean the seed is not there in the ground. That seed is there. You just have to be faithfully patient, long-suffering, seeking the Lord, trusting God. You got to be able to look at the field and see the harvest when it's, it, it's not there, Steve. When it's not there. Even though it didn't grow yet, you got to be able to see the field and know there's a harvest underneath that ground. And I'm trusting God for that harvest. Look upon those acres and say, you know what? All of that is mine. The other people are looking at dirt. What are you talking about? See, that's, that's, see they, your faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things unseen. They can't see it. Right? That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. You got to be able to see that in the spirit. There's a harvest right there. You got to be able to look over this church and see the pews, the pews that filled up with people. And preach and go forth in ministry as if the church is already full. Because you, if you know there's some seeds underneath the ground, yes. and it's going to be just the right time Amen. Amen. for the harvest. Amen. It's going to be just the right time. Amen. I want you to understand one more thing. Which is my next point. We will reap more than what we planted. So what do you mean? That sounds good. Is it biblical? Yes, it is. Matthew 13 and 8. This is what Matthew 13 and 8 says. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as been planted. See, when you plant a kernel of corn, you reap a stalk with several ears on it, and every ear has several kernels on it. And that's the same with a blade of wheat. You, you sow a seed of wheat, you reap a blade of wheat that has several seeds on it, so you most certainly reap way more than what you planted. Now, how big of a harvest you want is determined by you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 that remember there's a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But one who plants generously will get a generous crop. But we are faithful and tenacious in our show. If we are bold and active in our planting, the harvest will be great. If we sow seeds of faith by going out and sharing and planting and doing the work. So you have to know sowing is doing some work. If you plant some seeds along the way, you will reap way more than what you sow. See, the one thing we got to know as people of God, that sheep begat other sheep. One sheep go get another sheep. That sheep going to get two more sheep. And that sheep going to get two more sheep. It's an exponential harvest, but you got to sow the seed. And the more sheep you plant seed into, the more sheep you're going to harvest. The more seed you plant into fertile ground, the more you're going to reap of a harvest. But you got to sow the seed. See, the, a lot of us, we like, we like to stick to formulas. God said 10%. Guess what? You stuck to that. But if you have a generous heart, 
you will most re certainly reap way more than you can sow. The Bible said, give and it should be given unto you. Press down, shake and shake to men get unto your bosom. People give to you more than you can ever give away. It's some people who give, they can't give away enough. They can't give away from them because God, the, 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 the law saw a reaper just in play. The more they give, the more they get. But you got to sow the seed generously. You got to be faithful. You got to be tenacious in your sowing. That means you're not giving up. Just because the ground a little hard right there, you got to break that ground. Sometimes you got to just stick in that point, that, that place for a little bit. Now break that ground now. Because some people, the seeds just don't, they don't just receive them readily, easily. Some people might ignore you. Some people might blow you off. But the more seeds you sow, the more words you speak, the more you demonstrate God in the workplace and everywhere else, those seeds get sown and eventually it's going to break ground. And eventually it's going to take root. And guess what? It's going to reap a harvest. And he, that person going to know it's true and they're going to go get somebody else. Hmm. It's real. You will reap more than you plant. But you got to plant. You want a small crop? Then we find one again. But if you want a big crop, you got to sow some seeds. People got to know you're there. You got to go out in the field and spread your seed. Yeah, 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 you might get that later. You might get that later. See, we can leave the harvest to God. See, God is, he's the God of the harvest. He's the Lord of the harvest. But we must plant the seed to bring forth fruit out and for eternity. It's our job to do the planting. When Jesus sent, sent out the 70 disciples, they was out there planting the seed. The harvest is great, but the workers are our few. But with the few, we can bring forth a mighty harvest. And guess what? Harvest didn't take work too. You got to bring them in, don't you? You got to go out there and get them, don't you? It's not till the harvest end. That's when you can finally just sit back and say, and let the Lord say, "Then I'm faithful, my son. Good job. Good job." But it's not until God is ready to tell you, good job, that's when we have to sow and see. Sow and see. I don't know about you, but I know it's a time for my heart to come. And I don't want a small heart. I don't want a small harvest. I don't like a small anything. I don't want mediocre anything. In fact, my family creed is about being extraordinary, extraordinary. Going beyond mediocre. See, we can't think you're going to be been praying like we always been praying and, and, and reap something greater than what we've been reaping. You can't do the same things and expect different results. That's insane. You want a greater harvest? Y'all want more folk? Y'all want God to do something great in your life? You got to sow some seeds in the spirit. Yeah. You want God to do something different in your life than, your, than what's been doing, done in your life before? You got to start doing something different. How about you start praying? How about you start serving God? How about you start walking by faith? Yes. Yeah. You want something different in your life? You got to do things different. Because one thing is for sure, you only gonna reap what you sow. That's it. You only gonna reap seeds of this kind. You're not gonna reap anything different. If you tired of life handing you lemons, plant some apple seeds. Hmm. Want your husband stop acting up? Want your wife stop acting up? Hmm. And for you to start sowing into their life, start sowing some new seeds of love and encouragement and showing and demonstrating what patience and forgiveness is. 
You just can't sit back and think that things are going to be different just because you hope and wish. Hoping and wish don't get you anything. See, hoping just keep you alive. It just keep you in place. That's it. All hope do is keep you in place. But if you want to move forward, you got to do something different. You got hope. That's why you're still here. If you want to move forward, you got a place where you are. You got to start sowing some different seeds. Hmm. Hope that resonates in somebody's heart. That resonate in somebody's spirit. You're only going to sow what you're going to reap. You're only going to reap what you sow. That's it. And that's a law that nobody can get around. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for the Holy Word. I want to thank you, Father, for what you have been doing in us. You have sown into us, my Lord God. Now it's the time, Father, for us to start to sow for a greater harvest. Bless the Lord. To start operating differently. Start worshiping like we ought to and serving the Lord as we ought to. Bless the Lord. Somebody, bless the Lord. I don't know if it's somebody that is doing over the internet or somebody in this room. You want some things to change for your family? You got to start pursuing God. Hallelujah. You want some things, the atmosphere of your home to change. You want things, to, the climate of your family to change. See, it's not just about you and the, your immediate family right now. It's about the, your children's children. If you want your children's children to serve the Lord, you got to, serve, you got to sow the seeds now in your children. See, God is trying to save your generations to come, but you got to plant the seeds now in the spirit and start serving the Lord faithfully. Oh, bless the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is that you? I want to pray for you. If you're in this room, I want to pray for you. Because we're going we go. we to pray that the Lord just do something in your spirit. Bless the Lord. If it's if it's not you, and you on the internet, I want you to call 708-325-8434. 708-325-8434. Bless the Lord. If you call in for prayer, hallelujah, because I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. That's you. You want God to start showing some different seeds in you. You want some things to change in your generations? I want to pray for you now. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 She's not the only one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel in my spirit there is somebody else in this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to bless the Lord. Somebody else. Now you know God is moving on your heart. You, you sit in your seat uncomfortably. And you know you need to be up here for prayer. Hallelujah. Don't miss your time now because this is the time God has given you. If you don't use the time that God has given you, you may not have any more time. Hallelujah. Now, I, I usually don't put no pressure on nobody, but this is about saving your life and your children's children's life. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord.